Welcome to the product decoration guide and storefront decoration guide. So if you want to decorate a product in any one of your stores, just go to the store you want to decorate that product in, go to store admin at the top and you'll click create new. Uh, this area here draws from every product that you've added from your, from the supplier catalogs to your account. You can scroll down the list here, or you can search a SKU here on the top. Uh, we'll just grab this 5,000 here, for example, click add color to select all the colors you want to offer here. And then you can upload your art here on the right. You can do a raster or vector file here or any DST file. Just choose either option, select your file, select the file from your computer and hit open. It'll upload that file. Once it's uploaded, it'll appear right here. Just click it, pops it into the product, and then you can resize it with these arrows here. You can drag it around and you can also rotate it and you can see how it's going to appear on each shirt here. So. Let's say we're not too happy with the gray here on this red shirt, kind of blurry into the shirt and we want to change that. You would then just view colorways, create a new colorway, choose the color you want to change here, which is going to be the gray, select color. You can darken it up, hit done and it'll save it. Uh, I've already done that here with this colorway. So at this point you just select the color of the shirt, select the colorway. And then if you go to another color of the shirt, you can see we're still using the original piece of artwork, but I can also assign the new colorway here as well if I want to. Create product when you're done. And it takes you right back here so you can keep going, keep decorating, do as many products as you want to. There's no limits here, so I can grab this same SKU and decorate it with a different piece of artwork if I want to. Uh, once you're finished decorating everything, just hit next product details. And then on this page, you can adjust the product name the default color, which is the first color that appears on the storefront. And then it does add this extension here to the SKU to make the product unique. Uh, we can't have two identical SKUs in the system, so it'll just add an extension here. Uh, but for purchasing reasons, Inksoft st still knows this is a Gildan 5000 and it'll pull all those together in our purchasing area so you can purchase all your 5000s that you need. Enter your price. Uh, this little icon right here, override price per size, open this up and you can mark up your larger garments right here. So let's say 27, 29, 31, 33, done, and then finish. And here it is. Store admin will only display decorated products here. If you have blank products assigned to the store, you're not going to see them here. You're just going to see your decorated products. If I want to display this product on the storefront, it's not here in the storefront, but it is in the store. So as a customer, if I went to view all products, that's where we're going to see this decorated product. So it is in the store now. It's just not on the storefront. So if you want to change the visual look of the storefront, including, and that includes adding products to the storefront, go to style editor at the top. And it's going to be in this section right here, just to show you, you would hit manage products. And then on the left, you're going to see all the products in the store, including blanks. I hit the plus sign here to add it to the next column and then hit done. And then it'll be here on the page. So inside style editor, wherever I hover my mouse, uh, I get a menu at the top of the section. My mouse is in, uh, if I click edit, it tells me what I just selected. And then I get a sub menu below that for what I just selected. So here's the header sub menu, edit this. Here's our featured product sub menu. If I want to add something to the page, I'm going to use this blue plus sign here in the bottom, right? which opens up this menu of different components you can add to the page. Uh, we'll just run through these here. Uh, if you see layout one and layout two, just know they all set up and function the same exact way. They're just going to look different. So let's add our fundraiser here. Uh, here it is. As you can see, it's selected. You can switch layouts up here. Uh, you can also change the background color of the component as well as the primary color, which is not every component has this, but in this case, this primary color would change the color of this progress bar. And then fundraiser image, whenever you see image guidelines like this, just know it's, it's just a guideline. It's not a hard requirement. So really any three by one pixel dimension image would fit this area. Fine. If you upload your image here, this image would be in the background of this fundraiser text here. I uh, hit goal settings to open up the fundraiser and set it up. Uh, you've got three options. You could do a financial goal, units based goal, or leave it open ended. So there's no goal, but you still keep track of the amount raised. So let's do a financial goal, type in your goal here, and then customer payout metric. This is how you determine how the money gets added up to the amount raised, which is displayed right here. Two options. You've got a percentage of profit, which you can track. So say 25% of your profits go towards the fundraiser and those that 25% would be tallied up right here. 
or you can select a flat dollar amount per unit and say $5 per item sold will be tallied up over here. Hit next and just type in your fundraiser description here. You've got some text editing and formatting options. Next. And then you can set an end date or not to the fundraiser. So if I leave this set to no and hit done, then the fundraiser will be on the page until you decide to remove it. Or if I hit yes here, I can then set an end date, a time and a time zone. And once the timer runs out, the fundraiser would be removed from the page. Or if you want to, you can disable the store once the timer runs out. Just turn this on here. Yes, disable store. You can also be notified when your store closes and you can type in multiple email addresses here. If you want to delete something or delete a component, just hit the trash can here on the right and then yes, remove component. The next up is the content block. This is just a block of text you can insert onto the page. Just like that. And then it works like any other component. When you have multiple components on the page, you can move them up or down. So if I bump this up, with this up arrow, it'll move it up, you can move it back down. And then this option here, reorder components. If you have a really large page, we just open reorder components. It's going to display your entire page layout here. So you can click and drag and rearrange your entire page from one view. Hit manage content to open it up. And you've got text editing options here. You can insert links, you can insert images, you can attach links to images as well as insert a video link. You can't upload a video file here, but as long as that video is hosted on YouTube or Vimeo or something like that, just paste in the video URL here and you can autoplay or not. Just hit insert. The content block does also support HTML. So if you go to code view here, you can see your HTML input and customize it this way. Call to action. This is just a traffic directing tool. So basic example of how you might use this. Let's say you have your own website outside of Inksoft that you want to send, you know, a link to could say something like see our other stores and then you can change what these buttons say. So primary button text here, will change this to store one secondary button text right here. We'll change that to store two. And then primary link is attached to the primary button. Just paste any URL you want to here. And then when I click this button, it'll take me to this link. Same thing with the secondary link and the secondary button. You can also open those links in new tabs or not. Uh, featured products, there's four different layouts. They'll work the same. It just determines how many products per row, one, two, three, or four. And then promo bar, super easy. If you're doing any sort of discount code or something like that, just type it in the promo bar and it'll scroll down with you at the top of the page. So it's always visible. So good visibility there. So we've got two different banner types. Uh, we've got the slideshow and the hero space banner. So the slideshow, same kind of deal. You can change the background color here. Animation type, you've got a slide or a fade when it switches to the next slide in the component. Rotational rule, this is how many seconds it'll wait before it switches to the next slide. And then if for whatever reason, the image you upload here doesn't fit the page, you can then manually adjust your pixel height here to fit it to the page and it'll stretch it. For each slide, upload your image here. Same thing. This is just a guideline, not a hard requirement. You can add text here and you can add button text. So as you can see, there's no button in here, but as soon as I type something into the button text, it then creates a button with my text. I'll then paste any URL I want to here. And then I click the button and it takes me to this link. You can add as many slides as you want to here. And each slide can have its own unique image, text, and link. Next is the hero space banner. Uh, we'll do layout two because that stretches the full width of the page. Animation type, slide or fade, same thing. Rotation interval, how many seconds before it switches to the next slide. Upload your image here, same thing. Just, you know, different image guidelines, but the same idea, just a guideline. Paste your link in here. And then when I click this image anywhere inside this, this uh, rectangle, it'll take me to this link and you can open that in a new tab or not. And same thing as the slideshow, you can add as many slides as you want. Request a quote. Uh, this is a quote form that customers will fill out. And once they fill it out, it gets sent to the email addresses that you type in here. You could do something like all embroidered orders must request a quote. 
subheading here is just more additional information if you need to add that. And then the form fields are the questions it's going to ask on the form. So the active column here turns the question on or off, and you can make each question required or not. And then you get a success message, thank you message, you know, thank you for filling out this pull request and add component. Countdown timer. This works just like the fundraiser. So you could do something like sale and it is soon. Hit manage end date and choose a day, a time and a time zone. And then once the timer runs out, by default, it'll just remove the countdown from the page or you can close the store, receive an email notification and type in the emails you want to be notified. Testimonials, pretty simple. Got your heading and your subheading, your background image, just a guideline here. For each testimony, you can upload an image of the person, type their name in, their company name, leave a link to their company if you want to and open that a new tab or not. And then in the quote is where you'll actually paste the review. Uh, but you could add as many people to this as you want. Lastly, you can also add custom pages. If I go back and just click style editor, that's how you would access it here. It's on the first page inside style editor. So just hit add page. Let's say you want to add an about us page. Uh, give it the title here. And then the slug is just the extension. It adds to the URL bar here at the top. You can unpublish the page, work on it, and then publish it once you're finished if you want to, and then just hit create page. And then it adds the title up here to the header. And if I want to make changes to the about us page, I now have about us here in our pages. So hit the three dots, edit page. And now I'm still in style editor, but I'm just editing the about us page. So I have the same exact controls I had before. You can add whatever components you want to this page and customize it and then save it.